Now we're coming to Isaiah 53, and before I show you the translation, I want to show you the structure, the metrical structure of Isaiah 53. In the first place, I've already made a two-minute video on this that goes through the structure at the beginning of the Psalm 90 playlist, so you can sort of watch the poeticness of it. But bearing in mind what I just told you about Psalm 90, I want you to see that Isaiah is taking, first of all, oh, I got to tell you, uh, Isaiah 53 doesn't begin at Isaiah 53.1 in Hebrew. It begins at 52.13, right here, okay? So you have to go from 52.13 all the way down to the end of 53.12, which is right here, to get the full real chapter in Hebrew. So again, if you're just reading it in translation, you're missing a lot a great deal because just as Moses had done so Isaiah is mapping time beneath the words so the words have one meaning when you just read it as plain text and we all know that meaning is about Christ but it has another meaning of plotting a timeline countdown Per each syllable standing for one year, and it's telling you something about the history that's going to transpire, just like Moses had done. Paul's doing the same thing, but with respect to church. So Paul's continuing a tradition that goes back to Moses that I'm sorry the scholars don't know about. So that's why I have to make so many videos that to many are very boring because nobody knows about this and I just have to show it to you from the Bible text and you can, you know, the Bible's the authority, not brain out. The numbers are here. The text is here. It is what it is. I'm just presenting it, okay? So, as most people know, Psalm, I mean, Isaiah 53 begins at Isaiah 52, 13 in Hebrew. There's a psalmix marker that denotes when a chapter ends and begins. Okay? So we're going to go through the English in a minute, but I just want you to see that 52, 13, and 14 are 42 syllables in length in Hebrew. Uh, Matthew uses his 42s in his genealogy. He's playing off Isaiah. Okay? And you're going to see why, hopefully, in this segment. All right. He also, therefore, Isaiah is closing with a 42-syllable segment. So that's the 84 that Moses had used in Psalm 90, verses 1 through 4. What basically Isaiah is doing is he's splitting the 84 into two parts to, to tell you that that first 84 syllables, which is the millennium, how it gets done, also that it's the decree of God, God being the actor Moses is speaking for in Psalm 90 verses 1 through 4. How is God going to affect, effect the return of Israel? Return is one of the most important key words in Israel even today. Okay, One of the words that they use to talk about it is Aliyah, returning to the land. Okay, returning to your roots. Shuv is the actual Hebrew word, but Aliyah has got a very significant legal connotation in Israel even today. Okay, so the return. Return, oh man, return the time, return to perfection, you know, cycle, finish, because, you know, it's perfect environment in the millennium. So that's why he's bracketing the, the 84 as 242s. Everything in the middle is supposed to tell you that, hi, this is God's purpose overall. God's will is going to get done. That's the first meaning of it. Then you got 35, which is God's vote, in verse 15, marked off and paralleled in both text and meter with this 35 in Isaiah 53.10. Both of them are on atonement. But in particular, verse 15 is on the prophecy to the Gentiles 
how the Gentiles are going to hear about this Savior, this Messiah, that, you know, wasn't told to them. Now, the total number of syllables from 52.13 to 52.15 is 77, which was David's age at death. The content running sotto voce, I mean, you know, the surface meaning, of course, is Messiah, but Isaiah is also plotting the meaning of David's life in segments. This is about David's life. The chronology in Psalm 90 ended at 1050 BC with the rejection, you know, because it was the judges. At the end of the judges, you have the rejection of God as king, Saul appointed king. Isaiah skips 10 years to David's birth and picks up the timeline from Moses at David's birth. And this is basically a theme of first David to last David. The birth of the first David starts here and the death of the last David ends here at the end of 5312, Isaiah 5312. That's the meter structure that is being used. Okay? The 235s are God's vote and the people's vote. Okay? That's 70. 70 year voting period, 70 sabbatical years, get the pun. All right? But Israel's going to vote badly. So there is a hiatus in here between David's death at 77. There's a hiatus of 252 years that Daniel's going to play on in his own meter on Daniel 9. There's 252 years in ellipsis there. So Isaiah 53.1 picks up in 712 B.C. or 714 B.C. i got to hone it down. When Hezekiah is first, he's attacked twice. When Hezekiah is first attacked by Sennacherib, it happened two times, not one. And so the timeline here picks up with the text at 714 BC. So between David's death at age 77 and the beginning of Isaiah 53 1, which is probably why scholars think that the chapter is separated this way, that's a hiatus of 252 years beginning at 714 BC and it goes syllable by year all the way through to Messiah's death. There's another hiatus that's occurring right in here of 364 years. Okay, but the point is is that this is syllable by year so that 56 years takes you to Manasseh the end of Manasseh okay and then I'm not going to give you all the history because that would take too long and then he, right here at the end of verse 4 this is when the temple goes down in 586 BC and then down here this is 460 BC when if the temple had always been standing and never went down it would have completed its 490 its second 490 that was owed to it because the temple was given a 490 and it was owed a second 490 but because it fell it had to be rebuilt that caused an extra 14 year shortage in time and therefore Isaiah total explicit syllables are 462 debiting the 14 short from Moses plus an extra 14 short due to the temple falling so instead of it being 490 here at the end, it's 462, meaning 28 years have to be made up at, you know, at the time Isaiah is writing. Okay? There's a 28-year shortage. He's doing it at a time accounting. And then this same ending point here is 37 AD when the Lord was supposed to die because if you add up 462 plus the 252 in ellipsis right here plus another 364 that's in ellipsis 
it's actually a reimbursement of time for temple standing for 364 years by the time the first temple dies. So Isaiah adds it back here. This therefore begins in 5 BC when Mary gets the Annunciation and the text is about the Annunciation. And then this last text is about of course Christ dying on the cross but he was scheduled to die in 37 AD. He died, he ends up dying seven years earlier, but he was scheduled to die in 37 AD. And this is where Daniel's end point is in Daniel 9.26, playing back to this part of Isaiah. Okay, so you see that pattern. So we got 126 years after 714 BC, this is the, the 70 continues all the way down here. 714 BC and 126 years takes you to 586 BC. Temple falls. Okay? Then after the temple falls, there's a hiatus. Alright? And then that takes you down here to when Daniel prays and Cyrus dies. Then the temple starts to be rebuilt and it's rebuilt during this time. And then it's up again, and that takes you to 460 BC. And then here, this is taking you to when Nehemiah goes to rebuild the walls. And then here, I hope I'm doing this right. I'm talking off the top of my head. Okay, this takes you to the completion of canon under Malachi. Okay, and then you got the hiatus. That's why 35 is so important. Will Israel keep on voting when scripture is completed? And then there's the, the other 364 years coming in here. When there's no canon, you know, because that's the silent period. We call it intertestamental. That's when books of, Ma you know, the Maccabees were written. Alexander rises to power, all that. Or no, 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 I'm sorry, that's down here. That's down here. I missed it. That ends down here. And then that takes you to 5 BC when Mary gets the Annunciation, probably in Adar. Well, definitely in Adar, but I'm I'm thinking she got it at Purim. It was either Purim or on um, the anniversary of the completion of the second temple. I have to hone that down. Okay, so that's the structure. You'll notice that there's a lot of mirroring going on. Remember Moses said, give us as many good days as we got bad days? So you got 228, 56 represents um, uh, Israel being vote short. 49 years she didn't observe her, she missed 49 sabbatical years. And during the 49 sabbatical years, seven extra years were owed on them. So now it's a 56 instead of 49. And that's representing the time period that the temple was down. And he's pairing that to Manasseh because the Bible says it's due to Manasseh that the temple will go down. And that's how long Manasseh lived. That's how long Manasseh reigned. I mean, that's how long he reigned. Okay? And then obviously you know what the 70 is. Okay, so you see the 70 is mirrored and credited. It's mirrored and credited. See, the mirroring is real obvious in Isaiah's time poem. You got that. And you can download this. It'll be the link will be in the video description so you can look at it. So now we come to the English. This is about David, David's lifetime. It's about Messiah, but David is the progenitor of Messiah. So this is about David too. It's it's one actor speaking about both people. Isaiah playing the role of, you know, and this is God talking again, just like it was at the beginning of Psalm 90. See? And that takes you to the end of David. Then you have the 250-year hiatus in between. And now we're at 714 B.C. And it's talking about, it's talking about Messiah, but it's also talking about the reign of Hezekiah and then Manasseh. Manasseh started out real good. He grew up like a tender shoot. Okay? But then Manasseh came to despise Christ. Alright? And I want to say it was here. Like, to here. 
Then Manasseh goes in jail. He's jailed by the king of Assyria. I think it was Assyria. And then he re he repents, and he actually starts to believe in Christ. So now he himself is having griefs because he starts to believe in Christ, but the people don't, and they still despoil the temple. So Manasseh rebuilds the temple during the remainder of his life, but the people don't. They esteemed him stricken, and of course that's the the takes you down to. Um, 586 BC when the temple goes down okay now the temple's being down and this is the time period when um, who's he what says Daniel is goes it has gone into exile and he prays okay and then this is the time of the temple rebuilding okay it goes down to uh, I want to say here I might be a little off because I'm not used to working with the English and so it's hard for me to work with the verses. Look at the map and that'll tell you. Okay. And then you get you get all the way here, all the way to here, oops, all the way to here takes you to the intertestamental period. All right, and between, that's the end of the book of Malachi and in between verse 11 and the start of verse 12 are 364 years and then this is the Annunciation in 5 BC and this takes you to um, 37 AD when Christ was supposed to die now you're gonna have to play with that looking at the meter looking at the syllables looking at the history to understand how pithy a message this is about the history of Israel during the time between first David, starting up here when David's born, to the death of the last David in what was then scheduled as our 37 AD. But I hope that you're getting the basic impression that there's more to these words than what you just see on the surface. There is a map of time. It is a time poem. Isaiah is picking up where Moses left off, interlinking with him. And the theme of this is from first David to last David, and the total, this is real important, the total number of syllables is 1078. Now you know why I spent so much time on the 1077s, and we're going back to that, because Paul is basically tying what he says back to Israel's history, and especially back to Isaiah here, because Isaiah's total syllables, including the ellipses, are 1078. Okay, and Paul's going to set up parallels to that to show how all history is wound up via church specifically to fulfill the promise made here to Israel. Okay, so that'll come up in the next increment. Uh, no, in the next increment, I got to cover Daniel, and then I'll, I'll get to Paul.